Hey everyone, uh, my name is Dustin and I just wanted to kind of give you just the average consumer. I, I feel like I'm just the average cord cutter. Um, I've had uh, no cable TV, just strictly internet for probably the last four or five years. Um, and cable TV isn't something that I've really missed except for, and you see it on the screen right now, uh, sports. So I'm just going to kind of go over what sling uh, television kind of means to me is just I feel like your typical and average cord cutter. Um, now Sling TV is uh, you know just came out uh, just a few days ago actually I never was able to get into the beta I hounded them um, Twitter everything but I couldn't get in but now you can um, you get a free seven-day trial catch you have to give your credit card info right away so if you don't like it you need to make sure you cancel it before the seven days let me repeat need to make sure you cancel it or you get charged um, keep that in mind I know many of us hate that I am being one of them but that is just one of the things that happens sometimes um, so for 20 bucks a month you can get your hands on sling TV um, and it really kind of gives you access to you know a lot of the sh uh, a lot of TV that I I don't know I feel probably a lot of people watch uh, ESPN ESPN 2 you know TNT TBS food HGTV uh, on and on and on Adult Swim Cartoon Network um, you get uh, you, you know you get a few additional features with this as well uh, you get some like on-demand content um, things like that it, it, it's it's kind of few and far between it, it's not real crazy on what it gives you um, you can also go in you can also add a sports extra for another five bucks a month um, not something that I've done I am just waiting to see if I'm going to use it. Um, I'm here in Wisconsin. A lot of times it doesn't matter and none of these stations here, none of these other uh, stations are something that I'm going to need for sports actually. Um, most of the time it's either like a Big Ten network type thing um, or like an ESPNU or something like that. Uh, you can also do news and info, it gives you headline news, uh, cooking, DIY, Bloomberg. Um, and then also uh, kids extra um, for another five bucks a month yeah, you know some additional uh, Disney shows uh, like baby TV which I've personally never watched um, and you know sling has actually ca came out and said that they're looking to add a few additional uh, TV shows to this uh, best of live TV this additional $20 package here um, rumor has it that AMC is one and that can be huge because I'm a massive Breaking Bad fan even though I can still get my Breaking Bad like the day afterwards uh, most of the time you know on an, uh, an iTunes or something like that to be able to watch it live would be great so I don't have to um, go around not getting spoilers uh, the catch is with these other five dollar a month add-ons these are add-ons you have to have the base twenty dollar a month package um, you know, if you're not a sports fan, quite honestly, the $20 a month, I, I don't know. Maybe a lot of people are into, like, Home and Garden TV or, you know, watching Andrew Zimmer eat weird things if he still does that on the Food Network. Um, but outside of that, um, it's kind of interesting. So, all right, let's dive into Sling TV itself. Uh, what you do is you actually get uh, a download for the computer. Um, and I'm on my desktop right now. I'm on my Mac. It works on Mac, PC, um, Android, and... Um, iOS devices. Um, I, here, here's the the Sling interface right now, and I don't have a full screen. Um, it's just kind of windowed. Uh, you get all your channels. Uh, you can sort through all your channels, and then they kind of just pop up along the bottom like that. Uh, you can, you know, select kind of like a genre spe specific thing. Um, but the interface is really pretty simple. Uh, you know, you can click on ESPN. You can kind of see um, what's on now. Um, some things coming up in the future, um, what you're watching, um, and very, very, very minimal um, information, I guess. Uh, the information is, is, I guess, what you would see on a, on a cable TV box, which is good, I guess, for cable TV, but I don't know. You know, this is... Maybe there's some room for some some d other things in here since uh, a lot of this can be done on your computer or your mobile device. Maybe some social. I, I have no idea. Um, it just kind of seems blank to me in a lot of the region. 
But it, it's TV, I mean, so maybe people aren't looking for that. Uh, you also get a menu up here. You can kind of add things to a uh, watch list. You know, it's like your rented, your saved um, movies. Um, which brings me to this section here, the movies. Um, this is kind of all of your on-demand stuff. Who doesn't love some Guardians of the Galaxy? I can rent this just like I would uh, rent it from iTunes or Google Play or my Samsung TV. Uh, any of those. You can save it. Uh, you know, you get the all the cast, all that good kind of stuff. Um, and then it's, it's actually kind of neat because you can... You know, kind of, kind of dive into actors and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. But you can watch trailers, which, you know, load up really quickly. Um, and the nice thing about that is, you know, you can skip forward your thirty seconds. You, you can, you know, skip backwards. Um, and it kind of has all of those, just typical functions uh, that that you know a normal TV would. You, you can pause it, um, which isn't available on lots of things believe it or not it is not like a it's not like a, a dvr i guess you really can't pause um and rewind and stuff like that with a lot of the live tv that's one of my biggest uh my biggest cons i guess i would say and one of the things that i dislike most about the service is that i mean this is <laughs> this is using your computer or your smart tv and it is the exact same thing as a DVR, kind of in a way. I, I that's kind of how I look at it. So I just feel like you should be able to pause or rewind live TV. You can also do all of your captions and full screening. Um, but that's the thing. Now let's just switch a uh, let's switch a station quick here, and you'll kind of see uh, it loads up pretty quickly. And sometimes it takes a little while to buffer. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. I've not really ever found a rhyme or reason. My internet connection is very consistent here, and it's a good, fast, uh, consistent internet connection. Um, sometimes it takes a long time to buffer. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, I feel like for some reason the ESPNs take a, a little bit longer to buffer, um, especially when watching sports. Now, this is one of my pet peeves. You may say, I hate commercials. I hate commercials. But if you're watching something that is old broadcasts and you're doing so on live television it has commercials if you want that experience on your desktop or your mobile device it's going to have commercials as you can see ESPN sometimes chooses not to put commercials in and let me tell you a two minute commercial break or you know even like 60 seconds or something seems like it can go on for an eternity when you're just staring at commercial break we'll be back shortly or we'll be right back whatever they they choose to put on there it is it's terrible and i hate commercials don't get me wrong i'm not justifying commercials by any means but watching an espn thing is i feel like more terrible it, it, it just is um so uh one other feature i guess um uh, you know when i said that you can search you can um you know, it's just more or less searching the database. There you can see it's kind of taking a while to buffer this video. Um, and it's weird. I don't understand why. Sometimes it just hiccups there and then all of a sudden it'll go back. Um, one other thing that I found as well, and I don't know if this has to do with Sling. I don't know if this has to do with Java. I don't know if uh, this has to do with Minecraft. The reason I say Java Minecraft is because... <laughs> Uh, the other day I was playing Minecraft and um, my video would keep coming up and say like invalid, like a little error would come out um, or, uh, you know, I believe it said invalid all the time. Um, and it would kind of, the stream would come back in, um, but sometimes it would take, you know, 10 seconds, sometimes it would take a minute or something without me having to refresh it. Um, again, I don't know if that w was having to do with, you know, s um, my computer, how things were interacting, a different program entirely. Um, but that is one thing that I noticed a lot with um, w with playing Minecraft specifically. I haven't tried playing any other games. Um, maybe I'll have to test that out. Uh, if somebody's 
tested that out or looked and seen and you know any issues somewhere maybe that's something that uh, isn't bug fixes i honestly don't know but it is something that they whomever you know should look at because uh you know this is kind of one of those things for me tv i i normally it's my netflix that's going on in my background um anything that gives me um background noise really i work from home and I enjoy having, you know, something out in the background and live TV kind of fills that gap for me before it was, like I said, Netflix, um, which, which worked perfectly fine, but I always found myself, you know, um, either picking a show I had seen a million times. So I wasn't interested in it. Um, and then becoming interested in it again and wanting to watch it or picking a new show and wanting to watch it. So Live TV is good for that. I can turn on like Sports Center for an hour or something. I can turn on, you know, um, Supernatural reruns here, which I've never watched before. So I probably shouldn't do that. Um, but it does kind of seem to fill that gap for a cord cutter like Netflix does. Just the background noise. Um, and it, it does it fairly well. Um, a few other things that I want to comment on uh, specifically about the desktop version of it. Um, and I'm going to comment a few th on a few things about the mobile versions as well. Um, the mobile uh, app, at least on an iDevice for me, is super inconsistent. Um, sometimes, and it's hardly often, it's basically the first time I open the app on my iDevice, it loads quickly. It loads great. Um, when I try switching, I get a lot of buffering, loading, 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 never doing anything, having to close out device, loading, 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 um, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's, that's that. Um, now my Nexus 9 tablet on the other hand, my Nexus 9 tablet works surprisingly well. Um, it buffers quickly. Uh, it works really, really good. It's a great overall um, experience, 100% <laughs> to be honest with you. And just so you're aware, I have the Nexus uh, or the Nexus 5, which works well. And then uh, the iDevice I was using is a brand new, literally just a week old um, iPhone 6 with the latest um, everything on it. Um, so I was a little surprised by that, actually. Um, Big, 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 big con. And I know that they have this on Roku. And I know that they have this on some Samsung TVs. I have yet to be able to find it on my Samsung TV. And I can't believe it wouldn't be there. Um, maybe it just has to do with the searching. Maybe it hasn't popped up yet. Because it did take me a while to find it in the i uh, the iOS app store on day one. Um, so maybe I just need to look a little more closely um, at my Samsung TV. But I need to get this on a TV um, where is my Chromecast capability? My Chromecasts, I love my Chromecasts. They are the best devices I have ever owned. They do every single thing that I need a smart TV to do. Every single thing. Um, and I want this on my Chromecast. Now, I could go out and buy a Roku, I know, or I could do a screen share to my Chromecast. Let's be real, the screen share... The screen share does not work well for video or anything. It works good for like demonstrating something and that's, that's it. Um, I don't have a Roku. I could go out and spend the 70 bucks on a Roku and I just might if I don't get an app on my TVs um, in a, in a, you know, in a, in the, the near distant future. Um, now with that being said, it's a good, it's a good service. It's a very good service. Um, it works as advertised. Um, the stations are there. I find myself really only needing ESPN and that's it. Um, because everything else I can get online. Um, yes, it's nice to have, uh, you know, TBS and TNT and all of those things, Food Network. Um, but I don't know. I've, I've really gotten so far out of the habit of watching live TV that it doesn't really matter to me anymore if it's live or not. Um, at now, let, let me say at $20 a month, it's probably cheaper for me to watch live TV than it would be to 
you know, subscribe to season passes for shows or download or, you know, purchase, download them individually, um, which could be good. Um, but the, the archiving of Sling TV here is really only three days, I believe, um, for past shows. So you kind of need to watch them within three days. If you're outside of the three days, you're kind of SOL. Um, so, but you know, it closes the gap with sports. Um, hopefully down the road, you know, I'll be able to buy HBO, uh, go as a standalone service so I can add my Game of Thrones. That's really the only thing that I'm missing is some HBO services. Um, Big Ten Network would be nice to have rolled into a sports package as well. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. And then the rumored AMC would also be great. Uh, but those are kind of my impressions on the Sling service as, you know, just your typical cord cutter. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if there's anything that you would like me to explain about the Sling TV service, and I can definitely do it. Just leave a comment. Um, thanks for watching.